Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we are still tracking Tropical Storm Barrel as it's making its way towards the Texas coastline, bringing potential impacts as a hurricane before making landfall. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Sunday, July 7th, 2024. The black arrow is Tropical Storm Barrel on its way towards the Texas coastline for a landfall early tomorrow morning. Pink is what's left of Invest 96L. And then our two red arrows are two tropical waves in the main development region, which are lackluster and not likely to develop. Here's the vorticity signature of all of our tropical entities. As you can see, Beryl is the more intense one, as it should be. It is a tropical storm, almost a hurricane once more. So here's the latest satellite image of Tropical Storm Beryl. As you can see, it's getting a lot better organized. Uh, it lost a lot of power after making landfall with the Yucatan Peninsula, and it took some time to restructure itself. And you can see it's almost quite there. And if we look at the latest microwave scans towards the last frame of this, you can see how it's starting to redevelop that outer eye wall where a potential rapid intensification is possible, but at least uh, the forecast is expecting at least a Category 1 hurricane. As you can see here, winds are up to 65 miles per hour. At the 7 a.m. Uh, forecast, it was only at 60, so it's already starting to intensify. It's moving northwest at 10 miles an hour and is expected to make landfall early tomorrow morning with Texas and then be inland by the time we get to 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Here's the latest key messages from the National Hurricane Center. You can pause to take a chance to read this. On the left is in English, on the right is in Spanish. And as you can see here, here's the, what the spaghetti track guidance models are showing, what the National Hurricane Center was using to make its forecast, and the model intensity guidance showing the potential of becoming a Category 1, almost Category 2 if it does rapidly intensify. That rapid intensification would be limited uh, due to its path uh, making landfall with Texas relatively soon. So that would be the saving grace if it does start to rapidly intensify it's going to be cut off and not have enough time to get to back to major category status, hopefully. So here's the models that we're going to, we're going to use. We're going to use the half uh A parent model. And reason being is it's got a 992 millibar low pressure system for this morning. And that's what the National Hurricane Center's hurricane reconnaissance were for, uh, measuring at the time of this video. Sea surface temperatures, again, are warm enough for rapid intensification. It's on the left side of an upper level ridge. The upper level low did move away, but not as far as it expected. So it took longer for this storm to uh, get back to potential hurricane status. And this upper level trough that's just to its north is what's allowing that pathway to get move north towards Texas. Wind shear environment is favorable for further intensification and the storms are becoming more symmetrical as we speak. It's trying to fight off that dry air, which is trying to wrap in from the south and east side. Here we can see sometime around, uh, was that three, four o'clock in the morning is when we could expect landfall somewhere in Texas. As you can see here, down to a 977 millibar low pressure system. So that would be a very strong category one if it was to continue to intensify at the rate it is right now. And with the wind speeds, we could see somewhere between three and five and four and six feet in storm surge along the Texas coast with one to, feet, uh, one to three feet on the western side of Louisiana, thanks to onshore winds. In terms of rainfall totals, we could see anywhere between four to eight inches of rain, especially where the center of the storm is going to come on shore. And then as it projects to the north and then northeast inland across the United States, so flooding is definitely a possibility. But then what happens after barrel? Well, let's see what the GFS is showing us. This is two days from now on Tuesday, July 9th. Barrel will be near Texas Arcana 
as it continues moving inland. What's, uh, we have another tropical wave that's going to be outside the main development region today. will be in the central southern portions of the Caribbean by the time we get to Tuesday. And not expecting that to develop because the Caribbean will be under high wind shear tut. And the main development region where we have our other tropical waves will have a lot of Saharan air layer with not favorable conditions. So it looks like we're going to be quiet for the next uh, few days or up to a week. As you can see on the GFS model, the Bermuda Azores highs can be very dominant across the Atlantic. So high wind shear in the Gulf and the Caribbean will limit development there. And dry air and Saharan air layer across the main development region will keep those tropical waves at bay and push to the south. This is by the time we get to a week from now, the next Sunday on July 14th. And you can see not much development is occurring on the GFS model. So let's take a look at the European model. And if we put this into motion, you can see pretty much the same thing. No tropical waves trying to develop. We saw maybe a little bit of a piece of energy from Invest 96L trying to develop in the Caribbean. I mean, not the, the Bay of Campeche, southwest portions of the Gulf of Mexico, but wind shear will likely keep that at bay. So here's the ensemble model showing practically no development except for barrels recurving path into the United States over the next seven days. So after barrel, we're probably going to have a quiet time. So we're going to look at some forecast models and uh, see what we could see for the rest of the hurricane season going forward. So we'll continue to track barrel on its way towards the Texas coastline. Hopefully it does not rapidly intensify, but if it tries to, we'll run into some land before it has the chance to do it. So, and then we'll, after this, see when, if and when we could see our next name storm develop, which would be Debbie. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on deciphering weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.